We're going to take a look at uh, assignment three, which is the uh, the machinist clamp. So navigating to assignments, assignment three, and then the instructions. Um, this is uh, an introduction to the process, parts, assemblies, drawings. Uh, there are six parts, five points each, one assembly, ten points, and the drawings, ten points. So I'm not loading these up on points because I'm not looking for you know, perfect details at this point. This is still early in the process. Uh, don't get hung up on the many details. Um, when we go over to page three, I also made the note that there's a lot of going to be a lot of new terminology, and this is a pretty busy drawing. So, kind of zoom up a little bit here. So, when you're looking at this, the six parts are a left jaw, a right jaw. And then they have um, the pilot screw, which has a relief on the end. And then the standard screw just has a chamfer on the end. And we're going to have to decipher through these uh, these dimensions. So really the, the focus will be on the jaw. Their left and right are pretty much identical. Um, 0.312-18, we do the fractional to decimal conversion. And 0.312 is 5 sixteenths, so that is the major diameter or the um, the diameter of the cylinder. And 18 is the threads per inch, so there will be 18 threads for every one inch of um, of cylinder. Uh, the designation Unified National Course, and so it's fitting a standard 2B. So an external, or let's see, actually that one's the internal. <laughs> uh, 2B is the uh, internal, and it gives us a class of fit um, that tells us how tight or loose the, uh, the tolerance of the threads needs to be. And then uh, two holes. So on this part, there'll be two uh, threaded holes on the, um, uh, the right jaw. There will be... Uh, a clearance hole, so 343. Uh, going back to the fractional to decimal, if we carry that out, 34375. That um, is uh, 1130 seconds. Right. And then the, um, the small relief, the alignment uh, uh, hole, uh, shown as a, a flat bottom, but it could also be drilled in 266. We would have to go to a drill chart, but I believe that's going to be a, a G or H drill or follow in somewhere around uh, 1764. All right, so a lot of numbers, a lot of uh, a lot of geometry. Also, wherever I see the uh, the chain dimensions, uh, we start to pick those up. I want to identify those because my natural tendency is to come off the datum and carry those over and that's one that um, has been a problem before for me in the uh, the past all right so uh, let's look at uh, some of the uh, the call outs so the jaw stock 0 0.625 by 0 0.625 by 4 and 13 16 8 1 2 cold rolled steel on this one and the abbreviation CRS uh, that would be the 1018. If this was a hot rolled steel, that would be 1020 or something in that class of, uh, of steel. Uh, case hardened all over, so these are going to get heat treated so that they have a, a little more wear. Uh, the pin stock, uh, 3 16 by 2, um, 2.5625 or 9 16 and two and a half finish size so they're calling out some some sizes the pins are identical so two required and then um, uh, pilot screw also cold rolled steel no heat treating and um, 688 11 16 by three inch uh, 88 so uh, about three and uh, seven eighths but we're going to have to do the stack up with the tolerance dimensions because stock is a recommendation. If I go to the, uh, I'm given this project to, to make as a machinist, and I look at these um, uh, stock recommendations, I'm going to go to the rack, and if I have uh, 5 eighths by 5 eighths, then I will pull that. But more than likely, 
standard stock sizes I'm going to have three quarter by three quarter and in the um, the round same thing probably three quarter inch round stock all right so take a few minutes look at the drawing and uh, kind of de uh, determine some of the uh, the issues or uh, what might be uh, problems oh and then a uh, number 13 is a numbered drill and it's giving us the decimal size after so 188 to uh, 185 through that's a um, a hard press that's um, uh, three thousandths of interference they're not expecting that to move after it's pressed together and good luck getting it apart all right so we'll fly this out uh, we went to um, into SolidWorks. I'm going to move this down just a little bit. All right, and then our first thing is file management. So when we create a new, and notice that um, I have jumped over to my uh, my laptop, so I have quite a few more. Um, templates that I've created for different um, uh, companies, organizations, and then uh, we're still going to use the, uh, the part inch template. Oh, and the file management then, let's jump over into Explorer. I've navigated over to my cloud drive, and the symbols are that this um, majority of this folder is stored on the cloud. It's not being downloaded, whereas some of these with check marks are local uh, files. We're going to go ahead and create a. I am right clicking and navigating down to new and folder. And so this will be, I'll well, stay with the uh, assigned three. All right, so that gives me a place to put my, uh, my files. And depending on the complexity of the part, we'll um, um, take those um, uh, folders, and we may have subfolders to mimic subassemblies. Um, so I'm going to, I have a couple of extra items here. Uh, I'm going to right click up in the gray area. And I'm going to turn off the 2D to 3D so that one will go away. Um, I have some extra things turned on here. So we're, my, my cam came on by default. So the HSM, um, I'll turn it off. Um, in 2018, you have sketching. And since this is a, uh, a tablet laptop or a touchscreen laptop, if I turn the sketch ink on, then when I go into the sketch, I can sketch basic geometry and it will find. So we'll, we'll do that a little later on. It's kind of neat, but, uh, definitely not in my workflow just, uh, just yet. So, um, to open up some space on the smaller screen, I'm going to right click, uh, again and turn off the sketch ink. And that just gives it a little more room for the, uh, the display. All right, um, so on the front plane, let's uh, jump back one more time before we get started. On the front plane, we're going to draw this basic outline shape. So this sketch isn't um, real complicated. Because the, um, the holes are on center line, I'm going to be looking at performing a mid plane. A uh, mid plane isn't necessary, but when we go over to the assembly, um, it's it's one that could help. So maybe we'll do the first one on the front plane and the second one on the mid plane, so that we can compare the uh, compare the strategies and the uh, the end conditions. All right. So on my front plane, opening up a sketch, going into the line command, and again, I know that I'm in a sketch by I have the reference triad, I have the red origin with the horizontal and the vertical legs. I have the confirmation corner up in the upper right and we have a status of editing sketch. So 
I'm going to click and drag. I'm looking for that first relation that as I hover over the origin, I'm seeing that yellow box with the coincidence. And when I click and drag, I'm going to drag it out oh, about uh, five inches or so. And then we know we're about five eighths. So I can get close to those numbers, but I'm not even going to try and take this out to three decimal places or two, two for that matter. All right. And since, um, my selection kind of got weird there. I'm going to use the middle mouse wheel to zoom up and get a little closer. And my mouse is jumping on me. All right, so connect those two. And since that one didn't go vertical, I'm going to come over while it's still selected into the property manager and select vertical. All right, so dimensions, we can go to right click in the smart dimension or come up to the command manager and set the dimension. Uh, one I'm not used to is the numeric input. So if you turn on numeric input, it doesn't appear to really have done anything. Let me get out of that and I need some dimensions. So we're going to jump back over. We have an overall of 4.75. Okay, and that's going to be for, for both. So if I hold the, um, the dimension, and actually that did not pop up with the little box. And I'll insert. Yeah, that one's different. Okay, so 0.625 and 5 sixteenths at the end, 0.313. And it just depends on how you round, whether you're going to see the 312 or the 313. All right, and then that uh, angle comes back 1.375. All right, and then so watch because that is my linear distance. When I come off to the side, that is my vertical distance. And so where I'm placing this, I'm dragging it far enough that I'm going to get the horizontal. And then it will go to 1.375. Okay, so we have a, uh, an outside profile. The difference here is... Uh, going into the um, uh, the rest of the geometry, I'm more concerned with the solid. When we were doing the uh, the sketches and making the solids off the sketches, we're now transitioning from that kind of wireframe um, process to we're going to go ahead and create the solid. And just as if I had a wireframe, I'm going to use the edges. And so default is point, um, blind in condition. We're going to give it 0.625. I'm not worried about the units. So we'll go ahead and accept. And that gives me the solid. So now instead of going to the, to the top plane, I have a, a face readily available. And we're going to make a round at the, uh, the back of the part. All right, so by selecting it, hitting Control-8 on the keyboard, that's going to bring me normal too. And I'm opening up a sketch. We're going to come over to the arc. Tangent arc requires an endpoint to start from. Center point arc could, uh, could work. My preference would probably be three point arc, so we'll do that one next. Um, the center point arc, we're going to approximate the uh, the center of the part, drag a location, and that was what I was looking for before was the uh, numeric input. So little box is up, and if I were to put a value in there, it would give me that value. All right, and uh, as we're dragging, let's see if I go 180 degrees and let go, that will cause the um, the arc to um, 
to adopt that uh, that dimension. So property manager, we come back over. One quick comment about the um, the parameters is you can enter these values, but just like entering the value in the numeric input, these do not cause the sketch to go fully defined. And even the 180 that I entered moved a little bit. So one of the things you can do to help yourself out, unless you're needing these numbers or want to review those numbers, is just go ahead and collapse. Um, go ahead and collapse the uh, the parameters out of the uh, the arcs. All right, so the arc is still free to move mostly. There was a coincident. I'm going to hold down. I'm going to select the um, the end point of the arc. Hold down the control button and uh, control select the line or the uh, the edge of the uh, the solid. And then this is going to be coincident or come over to the property manager and select coincident. Now, because this is able to move, we need to apply some tangencies. And tangency is probably one of the most common um, relations that your sketch will be underdefined and um, a lot of times when you're dealing with arcs there will need to be an additional tangency somewhere. So my two selections we're going to select, hold down the control button, select the uh, the edge, make tangent. Um, I don't necessarily have to click out each time, I can go right to the next edge, hold down the control button, select the arc, Go tangent. Pick the next edge, and as I'm picking those new geometries, uh, it is clearing the old geometry. So I just want to make sure not to select anything that was already um, part of my uh, my previous selection set. Okay, so in previous versions, quite a while ago now, but uh, where this um, arc touches at the midpoint is technically a zero thickness edge and um, that that has since been resolved but if you see that error then we would just need to extend this out and close it off we can use a open profile uh, for this um, for this sketch um, we're going to go into the feature this is going to be an extrude cut and it gives me the direction of the cut and I'm using the middle mouse wheel to rotate around to get a better view. The default is, um, oh yeah they changed that a little while ago, we're going to go through all both just to make sure that it catches everything. Um, when they added the blind in condition they really shouldn't have made that the default. Um, so that's going to remove material on this side if I reverse the arrow then all of this material will be removed since the arrow is on this side then we'll be left with the arc okay so we'll go back to the drawing and this is going to be the jaw one and so this has the 5 16 18 um, threaded holes all right so we're going to have to come back for um, for the whole location, but we know it's on on center line. And as far as my selection, um, it's not really going to matter whether we go for the uh, for the top or the bottom. If this was a blind in condition, then it would uh, like the other jaw has that blind hole on the um, on the end. Then we would have to pick the uh, the bottom geometry. So if I want to sketch on the uh, the bottom, we'll do Control Six, or make the selection and do Control Eight. All right. So the uh, formula for figuring out the five sixteenths uh, eighteen minor diameter is part of that um, threading um, chart that we put on the uh, the main page. But the quick um, is to take the 5 sixteenths and subtract 1 divided by 18 to get the uh, the minor diameter. We were just going to draw that hole. All right, so that math isn't um, overly complicated, um, but we have a tool in the hole wizard 
that is going to have a lot of that geometry for us. So where you can use the whole wizard, I'm going to recommend we go ahead and start it early and use it often. So picking on the whole wizard is first we're going to select the whole type. We have counterboard geometry, countersink geometry, through hole, and then a threaded hole, which is what we're going to utilize, the straight tap. And then a tapered tap is a pipe thread, so it has, um, has that compression in it. The uh, legacy is prior to 2004, 2005, I believe, is when they uh, introduced the, uh, the whole wizard. So legacy is a way of entering values for each of the, uh, the geometry. And then in 2016, I believe, they added the counterbore slot, the countersunk slot, and the slot. So we have different, um, different geometries to, uh, to work with. Because this is an inch uh, thread form, the ANSI, we do the pull down, then you're going to have ANSI metric plus all of uh, all of these are available, uh, all these different uh, standards. Um, the other one, oh, and then the uh, the type is going to be. Let's go back up because I didn't click on it. So right now we're in the um, the, the standard hole. We need to make sure that the um, the straight tap is selected. Oh, and it jumped over to the DIN standard. So there we go. That was what I was looking for in the uh, the threads. Is you have the ANSI inch, the ANSI metric, and then also helicoils, threaded inserts, and then different um, um, geometries for uh, for the threads. All right. So bottom tapped hole. We can go ahead and make sure it is a tapped hole. And then on the uh, the whole, whole size and specification, we're looking for 5 16 18. So notice this is giving me the 5 16 the decimal 0.312. If we show the custom sizing, then it's giving me the whole locate, um, the, the minor diameter of the hole. And we're going to go to through all. That's what the tapped hole is, as opposed to the blind hole um, gave us. We're going to utilize the cosmetic thread. We can leave it as just the tap drill diameter with no call out. Uh, the cosmetic thread gives us an indication. And then uh, removing the thread actually makes the hole bigger, which I'm not sure what that's used for. I haven't used it, um, except to, to try it and see that um, you know, as far as functional manufacturing, um, having the, the hole be the major diameter um, doesn't, really, um, doesn't really help. The thread callout will be for the 516-18. And if we turn on the class of fit, then there is our 2B. All right, so that's the first set, which is to establish the parameters. The second is to go to the position. And if you see anything that says 3D sketch, you're going to come out to the model, into the work area, and pick on the face so that you have a 2D sketch. You have a location to place a point. And those two points, everywhere we set a point, is going to be a whole location. So now I'm ready to add my relations. And we can right-click and select get out of the point, because if I were to keep clicking, I would keep adding holes. So to set this on the mid, I can right-click on the edge. Right? So making sure I'm on the edge. Select the midpoint. Hold down the control button, select the point for the for the whole location, and select the point, um, holding down the control button for both of those, and then set to horizontal. And it didn't add it to the relations, so we'll try again. There it goes. No. Double check. I was expecting it to add, but okay, it added, and it added the group. 
Okay, for our dimensions then, 1.968 to center, and then 2.282. All right, so we'll see if the, um, the box comes up. <clears throat> Eight nine six eight, and then from point to point, two point two eight two. All right, and because we have the relations on the mid of the uh, the part, and then dimensions from the end, that is going to cause the sketch to go fully defined, and that will give us our threaded geometry. So what the cosmetic thread did for us is it's showing the simplified thread form. If we switch over to hidden lines, uh, visible or in wireframe, we're going to see the minor diameter and then the simplified thread form for the major diameter. At the angle, um, an isometric or uh, thereabouts, we'll just see the um, the major diameter. If we go to the um, normal two or the uh, the ends, you'll see the major diameter. It's when you're in the side, either the uh, the left plane or the front plane, that you'll see those those simplified thread forms. All right, so that's our part. We're going to go ahead and hit save, and it navigated to the last place that I saved. So we're going to Go back to my assignments, and this is item one, jaw, and I want a little more description, so I'm going to call this the left jaw, and then my initials. Okay. So, a couple of uh, ways to reuse and repurpose our, our models. We can uh, open up a new part inch. I'm going to go to the window and switch back to that part one. If I don't have to redraw all of this, that's going to be a benefit. So if um, I were to highlight the boss extrude and press Control C on the keyboard and go back into the part, I think I need to select the front plane, but if we Control V, Mm, okay, it's not really liking the initial boss, so let's see if it'll go to the sketch. Control C. And the front plane is selected, and we can hit Control V. That, that named it. That wasn't exactly what I wanted. There we go. So I can bring that sketch over. And then the other other um, copy paste would be to go into the to the sketch window pick everything control C get out of it go over to the uh, to the new sketch we would have to edit that sketch and then we would get that um, we could control V and we would get pretty much the same same thing here one thing of note I have my relations, horizontal, vertical, vertical, the dimension, but notice everything is in blue. That is because if I drag any of that geometry, and because it's not flip-flopping or inverting on itself, everything is pretty much fully defined, except I do not have a relation to the origin. Right, so when we pull that relation to the origin, then coincidence is applied. And that um, uh, causes the sketch to go fully defined. So I'm going to accept. Oh, we weren't, uh, we didn't have the boss extrude yet. So if you go into a, a boss extrude and nothing's selected, we can either pick on the geometry or go into the flyout and pick the sketch. It's not required that you go back into the sketch to perform the boss extrude as long as it knows which geometry you're picking. All right, so instead of the blinding condition, we're going to go to the midplane. And again, more for contrast. Okay, so 0.625. Because the contour was selected, 
it's finding that um, you know that region or that contour so if I go ahead and accept the main difference here is that I will have the contours and region symbol as opposed to the standard sketch symbol all right so little little lines other than that if I really didn't want to see that one I would edit the uh, the feature and remove the selected contours and because everything is um, is closed it's just going to switch right over to a standard sketch all right so if there was intersecting if there was doubly nested um, there's a couple of conditions that would cause the geometry to um, uh, need to be a um, contour region all right so copying and pasting let's try the cut extrude so Highlight the cut extrude one, control C on the keyboard, control V, and it's saying uh, external relations being copied. Do you want to delete them? Leave them dangling? Well, if you leave them dangling, you have to delete them to reapply them anyway. So let's go ahead and delete. And it says, yeah, there's a problem. All right, well, we kind of knew that. And this is what happens when we have that um, uh, those loss of relations. So first of all, let's get the sketch back into position. So all I really gained was drawing an arc. So dragging the endpoint to the edge is going to give me coincident. And your choice. If you want to draw the arc, I'm illustrating the control C and the control V and reapplying um, the uh, the relations. If you want to just draw the arc, that's fine too. And then we'll go tangencies. And this time I clicked out. Tangent. And one more. Edge and arc. Tangent. All right, so since there's already a cut extrude feature associated to this, now that it has geometry, it's not a partial. It's not going to project. Uh, to the um, uh, to the edge of the part on an open profile, um, it can solve for the uh, the cut extrude. It's going to complete and be um, uh, fully defined again. All right, so Control Six puts me at the bottom. We know that the 1.968, and we'll do. Um, Let's go ahead and do this as a whole wizard. I'm going to introduce the uh, the S key. So normally we would have the the, the face pre-selected, and pre-selection makes sure that you don't see the 3D sketch. So having brought that up, let's make sure that we're not selected this time. Normal process would be to select, go into the whole wizard. If you don't pre-select and go into the the whole wizard, then there is the 3D sketch. If you want a 3D sketch, then you're going to click. Otherwise, it's asking you to pick the face. All right, I'm going to get out of that one real quick. And if you hit the S key on the keyboard, you're going to find the whole wizard. Also, extrude boss base, do the little flyout. You're going to have access to everything that's up here. Um, the selection tools, fillets, chamfers, planes and shading and we can add and take away so when we customize a little bit more we'll customize this menu all right now they're all popping around on me all right so let me have one more there we go so it takes me into the whole wizard usually would go directly to the whole wizard we're going to do a simple hole ANSI inch and i know that this is a fractional drill size so i'm gonna I'll go with um fractional with the um, standard hole we can show the uh, the decimal values and we're looking for 1130 seconds which was 343 344 depending on how you round and I showed the uh, the custom sizing on the uh, uh, on the other one try not to modify this if you don't have to um, 
there's other ways that we can manage geometry without overwriting uh, defaults, which uh, gets us into trouble other places. All right, so the near side countersink and far side countersink would be if we want an, ed an edge break. Typically, we'd call out a, a global edge break unless it was something specific to um, to that part. All right, so the positions, well, rotated for me. So now instead of selecting the midpoint, since I midplane this part, I can go right to the origin, hold down the control button, and that's going to be horizontal. We'll go right into the dimension, picking the end edge to the point. And this was 1.968. And we go ahead and accept. And that gives me the through hole. All right, I know that the pilot hole is 266, a quarter inch deep. They're showing it as a flat bottom, so it's um, the end is going to um, come into contact. And, okay, so 0.25. 266 and then its location would also be the 2.282 all right so if i were to just sketch this because i do want it to be a flat bottom uh, the standard simple hole as a blind end condition includes the drill point so 266 we would either find uh, instead of 1764 end mill and plunge in there, or we would modify a drill to create the, uh, the flat bottom. All right, so just drawing the circle, there is the um, numeric pad. So when I let go, and then keep in mind, uh, we didn't tell it to add dimensions. So since it's not there, I'm, it's not going to do it after the fact. So we're going to place it. And I know I put that in there, and I'm not sure what I'm... Oh, maybe I'm not hitting enter. I said, not part of my workflow if you're used to or have used uh, software that um, uh, places those. You probably have a better sense of what it takes in the workflow. All right, so... Our dimension is from the previous hole location to this hole location, 2.282. That gives us our position, extrude cut, and the distance is 0.25. And we'll go ahead and accept, and then that gives me my jaw too. Hit save. Item 2, job right, and my initials. Let's see, I put a space on that one, so put a space. Alright, so get, that gives us the two, um, the two jaws. Okay, so I'm going to close those. Now the um, the pilot screw and the screw are similar geometries, and there is a little bit of a dome there. So we'll we'll take a look at the uh, the dome feature. Um, because the the shapes are so similar, uh, this one has the undercut. This has uh, right up to the to the flange, but. All the geometry is pretty much the same. We're going to draw the uh, item 3 and then perform a save as. And then we'll um, uh, go modify the um, item uh, for the pilot screw. Okay, so I'll fly that out a little ways. See if I can still see my geometry here. Okay. All right. So file new. 
and this is still going to be a part inch. All right, and the decision here is that we could stack this all up and have um, four or five features for each of the cylinders, or we can perform a revolve. So one of the things that um, I don't think is emphasized enough is the revolve because we can um, get a get a lot of our geometry. Oh, and I clicked on it, so it's asking me where I want to sketch, and then it takes me into the sketch. We can get a lot of our geometry by cutting this in half, and then cutting it, quartering it, basically cutting it in half again. And what would be one one quarter view, uh, if we draw that, that becomes our revolve. So. To um, uh, start the revolve, we don't necessarily need the uh, the center line. And again, the difference between the, the center line and construction line are the same. Center line and line are able to toggle back and forth. So uh, once we set one, it's not uh, you know it's not super critical. We can allow it to go back and forth. So I've set vertical infinite length and for construction because it's a center line and then I'm placing it on the origin and we'll go ahead and right click and select and mainly I'm doing that to make sure that I didn't miss that if this was in blue I would have to drag it to the origin uh, let's see we're gonna go with the center section first so that was my overall and so I'm going to try this again, 3.813 inner. And apparently I zoomed up quite a bit. Okay, and it's showing it in black, so it applied. The concern is kind of like the convert entities, is if I can still drag it, if I can move it, and I can't change it easily with a dimension, I'm probably still going to add that dimension. So 3.813. Alright, so now if I go to move it, it's it's there. It's not allowing it to uh, to change uh, change positions. Alright, we're coming out. So 0.156. Enter. And then let's check. So pretty much the same thing. It puts it into position. But, uh, you know, I just, you know, even, even though it's there, one, one slip, one move would, uh, would cause that to come off position and change the, uh, the dimension. So, all right. So up, over, we'll put that one in place and close this off. So again, pretty much just, have my sketch geometry missed one, so I'm just going to grab that endpoint and drag, maybe. Come on. Okay. All right. And then once I added the uh, the additional line, it um, kind of lost its um, uh, default anyway. So. All right, because this is a revolve, we're going to go to the diametral dimension, so it's at 0 0.312. If I go between the object line and the center line, then it will give me the radial or the half dimension. So 0 0.312 is OK. The length of the thread is 2.5, and so it still thinks I'm in that diametral mode. So if I'd picked one of these guys, it would have been okay. So I'm just going to hit escape. That puts it back into linear. 2.5. The um, flange height is 0.188 3/16ths. The overall Uh, for the head is um, 
And the problem with the, um, the dome is that if I don't include the, the radius for the, or if I include the radius for the dome, then I have to cut it away. And that's not really how the, um, how the tool works. Alright, so 0.625. Oh, and I keep putting that second decimal in there. Alright, and I'm going to line these up. So select, hold down the control button, and select. And because I picked the lines, it's going to be collinear. If I'd picked the endpoint in a line, it would have been coincident. So let's fly this back in. Alright, so 625.188. And somewhere looking for an overall. Now if we had the uh, 3.813, oh, the diameters, yeah, so the lines are in place, alright, so let's go back and I think my, my length is okay, the up and then, okay, so this was 6.88. And then the relief the diameter is seven sixteenths point four three eight. Okay, so still in di diametral. Okay, so that looks okay. Alright, so the dome is about a sixteenth, and I will illustrate how to, how to do the dome, but the, uh, the dimensions aren't really going to allow for it. So we did a center point arc previously. Um, I could go with a tangent arc. Okay, so we bring that off to the side. And because it was tangent, I should be able to go to the endpoint and the line, 063, 16th of an inch. And this is going to put us into contour and region unless I trim those out. But because I have dimensions applied, possibly to the line, possibly um, to those geometries, I don't really want to, want to mess with those. All right. So first, to illustrate the, uh, the dome, Let's go into the revolve, and line one, our center line was picked up. Since it's the only center line, it defaulted to the axis of revolution, blind in condition of 360 degrees. And if I select the contour, then it's going to leave the flat. But that's going to make it um, make it too long. So there's no well, I say that there's no dome command in the uh, command manager so insert feature and under features you're going to have these additional um, commands to uh, to work from so dome the face that we're going to produce and then the height 0.063 and that would give me my dome feature so the thing to watch out for is do we want an elliptical dome, which kind of carries over, rolls over the edge, or standard that is just going to be a, uh, to be an arc. All right. So since, um, this really isn't going to help me with the, uh, the dome command, I'm going to edit the feature and then remove the contour. And we're going to switch to the region, which is going to include that arc and that's going to give me the, the relief so this is item three and my initials all right so this isn't um, necessarily complete we still have fillets we still have the through hole um, let's go ahead and, and put a few more of those uh, for those geometries in. All right, so at the bottom we had the number 13, 185 drill goes through. We can um, 
set that up. Now I don't know that the uh, the hole wizard is going to be the best choice here because it is a through hole. Uh, we would either have to create a plane, do the 3D sketch, or um, probably my my first instinct, my my gut tells me just draw the circle at the uh, center center of the uh, front plane and put it in position and, and go. So front plane, circle, point one eight five enter and I touched the screen so I have no idea what I did with it. <laughs> it's either gonna be really big or threw it up and there it is. Threw it up into space. Alright, so that's probably why I don't uh, don't use the uh, numeric input that much is I end up fumbling with it more than actually getting useful out of it. So 185. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn the numeric input off. And then as far as its position, uh, 343 from the top. Right, and what we're going to be looking for here is because it's on the dome. See if it's actually going to be able to let me uh, pick that. And the icon here is really small, but it's a cylinder through with a line through it. So that's showing me the silhouette edge. And notice that it goes to the center point. All right, so we're just going to accept whatever it uh, generated. And because we went to the perimeter to the to the dome, I'm going to switch to leaders. And the reason that we are picking those uh, those perimeters, let's go to a minimum condition. If uh, you go to the center point, you would only see one arc, arc condition. So not, not necessarily a bad thing, you're just losing that functionality. Uh, three, four, three. Features, extrude cut, through all both. And we set our geometry. All right, and then one thing that I want to add is we're going to pick the leading edge, and we're going to add an annotation. Insert, and I don't think the annotations are up here. Uh, if I did this, oh, there's yeah, there's the cosmetic thread. All right, so it is there. So let's go through the oh, just off the screen, the annotations, cosmetic thread. So I'm not sure if I added that or if it's there by default. If it's not there on your screen by default, it means that I added it when we customize, so I will go through that. Be able to navigate, insert. Sorry, the annotations is just off the edge of the, the view, so it might pop part of it. And then cosmetic thread. And in all that clicking, I lost my edge, so it has to be an edge. We can pick the standard ANSI inch. And it defaulted to 5 16 24. We want the 5 16 18. It is not through. So we can tell it up to next. We'll see what it gets. And so there is the minor diameter. When we go to control one, then it goes to terminate the, the feature and uh, has the geometry. All right, so I'm holding off on the fillets because I want to save this and have my reusable geometry for uh, the uh, the pilot screw item four um, basically using this as a starting point so we're going to stop this video here and then carry over to finish out both the um, the pilot screw and the screw